Hey everyone, welcome to today's extreme dining room makeover. This is a DIY shiplap wall on a budget and it's a modern farmhouse dining room makeover on a budget as well. I'm so excited to be bringing you guys this video. If you're new here, I'm Becca and I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join the family if this is the type of content you love. We are going to hop right into today's video and this was my dining room beforehand. It's kind of right in between my living room and my kitchen, but we really needed to just show the space some love. And I really wanted to do a shiplap wall in that nook. So I went to Lowe's and I bought two things. It was four by eight of sanded plywood. This is the inexpensive way of doing a shiplap wall, a real shiplap wall. And we went ahead and cut them to size. I really didn't want staggering. I wanted them to be left to right all the way across the wall. And even though it was sanded plywood, it still needed a good sanding. I believe I was using either 120 or 220 sanding paper. But I just wanted to let you guys know that you don't have to use a electric sander. You can always do it by hand too. I actually kind of prefer to do it by hand, but you can also use an electric or if you don't have one, feel free to just do it by hand. Once we had all of our ship pieces ready to go, we went ahead and took our stud finder and found two studs on this wall for us to nail in the ship lap. You want to make sure that when you're doing this, you're nailing it into a stud so that it's secure to the wall. And we went ahead and took a level and we took a pencil and just marked all the way down the wall. So as we're putting the ship lap on the wall, we know exactly where to nail it in. Once again, we have the tools to do this, but literally if you have a nail and a hammer, you can also do this by hand as well. But we did have a nail gun, so we went ahead and used that because it was obviously the easiest thing for us to do. But we just went and put these all the way down the wall. I will say it was a little bit of a handful because this little nook from side to side, the walls are not completely straight and they're not in anybody's house. It's completely normal, but the walls are not completely straight. So every now and then we would come across a board where we had to cut the side down a little bit just for it to fit inside the nook. And if you're doing a wall that doesn't have it closed in like this, you won't have that problem, but we definitely did. And we also just took one nickel and put one nickel on each side to separate the boards just as much as we wanted to. I know some people do two nickels, some people do one nickel, or I've even seen it where people have done like a nickel and two dimes. You really can do the space however much you want to do, but I wanted just a tiny little gap and I thought a nickel would be just enough. Doing the outlets was really difficult, but we actually decided to just pull the outlets out a little bit. So my husband took the outlet covers off, pulled the outlets out a little bit and decided to screw them to the board so that they are flush with it, like it's just the wall. We were hoping that as we did boards, which by the way, these boards are six, six inch boards. You can get them cut down to however you want them we had Lowe's cut them for us and apparently they don't really do that anymore but I know Home Depot will cut them for you um, but when we were doing the board for the outlets we actually messed up the first board trying to figure out how to properly measure it and then we went back and just decided to completely measure the opening without the outlet cover on it and just do it that way and pull the outlets out but I'm not going to lie to you, it was really difficult trying to figure that out. So whatever method works best for you guys, if you come up with a better method. I will also have the two videos down below that helped me decide on how to do the shiplap wall. I referenced to two of them and I will have them linked down below if you would like to see those videos. I knew I was going to be putting a buffet right here, so we decided to just cut a piece of wood that was wide enough to fill the rest of the space and it's actually just extra wood that we had left behind from cutting off some of the edges um, and we just went ahead and used that because I knew the divide in the middle wouldn't be seen because there's going to be a piece of furniture there so we just went ahead and used that extra wood 
And now we are going to tape off the wall so we can start painting this shiplap. Since this wood has been cut and sanded, it's really dirty and has a lot of dust on it. So I took one of my microfiber cloths and got it damp and just quickly ran over this to get all of that dust and everything off of it. For the paint, I am using paint from Lowe's and it is just a paint and primer. It's all white and it's a satin finish. I should have probably used just a primer and then the paint, at least that's what my husband says, <laughs> but this actually worked out pretty well. I did two coats with the roller and then I did have to edge it three times because when I was edging it with the brush, it just didn't coat it like the roller does. So I did two with the roller and then three coats with the edging. So if you have bigger nail holes, which I did not have very big nail holes with the nail gun, you can go through and take like wood putty and you can cover up the little holes with the wood and you'll just sand it flat with the shiplap and then you'll paint it and you'll never see those holes in it. I decided not to do this because literally the holes were so, so tiny and I knew we were going to be putting shelves here that little details like that would not be easy to pick up on and it wasn't really worth my time to be honest. So I did not do that, but I know a lot of other people do suggest doing that. This was the last coat all finished and you wanna take your tape off right away so it doesn't peel any of your paint off when you do. Now we are moving on to putting up the new chandelier. I ordered this chandelier on Amazon. It was $175, which actually is an amazingly good price for what I got. I won't lie, the quality is very good for the price, but if you bought a $500 one, yes, the quality is gonna be much better on it. I am very pleased with what I got. I'm very happy with it. I will have everything that I can possibly link in the description box linked down below. So if you want to reference back to anything, feel free to check out the description box. Now we're moving on to the pendant lighting for over the island that has the sink in it. It's not really the dining room, but it looks over into the dining room. So I figured I would share this with you guys as well. These are technically called barn wood pendant lights. I was thrown off a little bit by the chain color. It's not a bronze, it's a like rustic looking one, but I really still love how they turned out anyways. Now we're just going to take some caulking and we're going to caulk both sides of the shiplap. And you really just wanna take this down the wall and then you'll run your finger down it to kind of push it in. And then once that is all done, you will take like a damp, wet napkin and you will just wipe off the excess on the side. But I wanted to show you guys a before and after of what a difference this stuff makes. Next project we're working on for this dining room is the shelves. I once again went to Lowe's and bought some wood. I don't remember what size these are. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I didn't even look at the size. I just bought what I knew I wanted for aesthetically pleasing wise. And I bought two of these boards. I brought them home. Once again, my husband cut off the edges to make them fit into the nook perfectly. They were pretty well sanded, but once again, I wanted to make sure that they were really smooth, and I'm pretty sure I used 220 to smooth it out. Uh, but once again, you can use a hand sander. It doesn't have to be a electric sander. And then I took this microfiber damp cloth and I wiped it down to get all of that stuff off. 
and we are using Minowax wood finish and this is in the Provisio. Provisio? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Don't come for me if I'm not. I can't pronounce it. I don't know what it is, but that's what it is. I love this color. I've used it for a few other projects and thankfully this soaks into the wood so well and it's such a beautiful, vibrant color that I only have to do one coat with it. Also, when I do this, I take a paper towel and I kind of soak it in the stain and then rub it all over the wood. Some people like to use a brush, but I find that when I do it this way, I get more stain on the wood and it just penetrates the wood better for some reason. I really don't like using a brush, but to each their own. This is the method I use that I always like going with. And I always just do what the directions say on the container for every step. I decided to go with these cool looking light bulbs that I got from Amazon. I will have them linked down below. And these were just the size that they recommended for the chandelier, but I just love how they turned out and how they look. All right guys, this was after I put one coat of poly on and in between coats of poly, you wanna go ahead and sand it down with a 220 grit sanding paper just to smooth it back out if there was any you know, bubbles or anything like that. Then you wanna clean it off once again with the microfiber cloth to make sure there's no dust or anything on it. I like to put the poly directly on like this. I just find that I get a smoother finish this way. I also like to use a foam applicator, even though the directions call for a paintbrush, but I find that when I use a paintbrush, I can see brush strokes, and that really just, you know, bugs the heck out of me when it tries. So I like to use the foam applicator, and when I dip the foam applicator in, it just doesn't ever seem to be a smooth finish as when I pour it on there. While I wait for the last coat of poly to dry overnight, we are going to hang the brackets on the wall for the shelves. We did brackets like this in our bathroom makeover. We really, really liked how the brackets looked with the shelves, so we decided to just do these again. We thought about doing floating shelves. We had floating shelves in our last house that we built, but we decided against it and just to do it this way. And I'm so happy we did, but I got these brackets at on Amazon. And to be able to tell where we should hang the second shelf, we took one of the tallest decor items just to see how far it would be from the shelf and make sure that the shelf wasn't too high. Our method is not perfect for hanging shelves, so I won't even tell you what it was. We just basically measured a bunch of stuff out, took a pencil to make marks, and then drilled it into the wall. Once again, too, we made sure that these brackets were drilled into studs. That is very important when you're building shelves like this and you're gonna be putting stuff on them you want to make sure that they are secured into a stud. And it was really easy to find those studs because we nailed the shiplap into the studs too so we could see those little holes and we could tell where the stud was. But we went ahead and just put the shelves on here and after we got them all on there and situated, we went ahead and put the rest of the screw screws into the shelves. All right, y'all, now we are going to move the buffet into the dining room. I really love this piece. It is exactly what I was looking for. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace, and I'm just so happy with it. I wanted to let you guys know, though, that I will be redoing this buffet. I have big plans for it. I'm so excited, but I decided to do that in a different video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see how I'm going to refinish this buffet. Next, I'm going to take some of this spray paint and I'm going to spray paint some of the decor that I have for the shelves. I found a lot of this decor from Dollar Tree, Goodwill, and Walmart. I kept it really inexpensive. I did not want to spend too much money. And then of course, I also shopped my house and found some stuff around my house that I could really just either spruce up or that I could find a new way to store it on the shelves or whatever, but you know, it's always best to do some thrift shopping when you're looking for decor like this because inexpensive is the best way to go. The shelves were kind of messy so I wanted to give them a good wipe down before I started decorating them. 
But I just wanted to say that when I decorated these, I literally was going back and forth. I could not make up my mind. I called my good friend Carrie and had her help me decorate them because she is great at decorating. If you don't know her ch channel, her channel name is Carrie Lynn. I will have her linked down below. I really love how she decorates, so I took a lot of advice from her on how to decorate these shelves because when it comes to decorating, I'm typically a minimalist and I like everything to have a purpose or a rhyme or reason, so it's really hard for me to come up with decorating when it doesn't have a purpose, but it's just meant to be beautiful, so she was so helpful in that department, but I will probably keep tweaking these shelves in this buffet for the next six months before I figure out exactly how I want this decor to look, but the end look came out pretty dang good, I'd say. All right, guys, I am so happy with how this turned out. I am so pleased with the ship lap. It was worth every single penny. It was worth all of the hard work, full days of work, but so incredibly worth it. And if you guys are looking for an inexpensive way to do ship lap, this is the way to go. I am so happy to be sharing this video with you guys. This is our new build home, and we are just so excited to put that personal touch on it, and we really feel more like home now and it really just has us built into it now thank you guys so much for watching if you're new hit that subscribe button please share this video with somebody you know that would really love it and enjoy it and i will catch you guys on the next one bye